Okay, so someone in the Corona forum was asking about creating shares. How do you create shares like this and shares like this? Now, this is easy to do in Corona. So what you're going to be doing is you want to open your material editor and then grab a Corona material, get this over here, and really you're going to be playing around with the translucency and you're going to be playing around with refraction and opacity. Here's the material which is on there now. And this is basically this bitmap. Black is where you can see through, white is where you can't. I'm going to open the render setup and I'm going to start interactive. All right, here we have our interactive rendering going. I'm just going to select these. I'm going to press F4 so I can see what I've selected. And I'm going to select these four shears. So grab a Corona material, bring that over here. Now let's get this assigned. And this is what you expect to see. Now, first of all, let's just get the color correct. You can always put a diffuse in there. You know, you might want to have a linen or something. Feel free to put that in there. For ease, I'm just going to set it sort of color. I want it kind of whitish. You don't want to ever go up to 255 and you don't want your blacks ever to go down to zero. Zero means it's going to absorb all light. You see how that looks like a black hole? See, that's just like, there's nothing there. So, you know, if you wanted black, you would set this. In V-Ray, you'd set it at seven. In Corona, I think you set it slightly lower, like two or three or something. Maybe seven's correct in Corona as well. Um, but for whites, you never really go higher than about 230. 255 means it's going to reflect all light into the scene in terms of GI. All light hitting it is going to bounce back into the scene and you're going to get incorrect lighting. So really, I tend to go between 180 and 230 for whites. If I want this to be slightly cream, I'll do something like that. And just select OK. All right, so I've got the color about right. And really, you want to be playing around with translucency and refraction and opacity. And it's really a mix of those three when you're doing shears. If I set this translucency up to one, you kind of get the effect that you want, but the outside is completely blurry. You can't see anything there. So it's useful, but also not useful. It just blurs the environment too much. So I'm going to set that down to zero. Refraction, if I set this all up the way up at one, it's also good to notice that this IOR is set to be like glass. And if you zoom in here, you'll see that you've got, you've got this IOR of 1.52 occurring, and you don't want that happening. So let's set this IOR down to one. And it's not just me saying you don't want it happening. If you look at the reference image here, you see you've got this line, like you don't have that refraction that you get with glass. Here you can see through, there's no refraction happening. This is linen. So that's why I've set it down to one. But now obviously, you know, there's something there that it, the computer's getting a bit confused because we've got this set so high. I think with this one, I set it at 0 0.6. So we're just going to set this at 0 0.6. And now we get the shears back, but there's some refraction happening. If you look through here, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look through, you can see the buildings beyond. You can see the shapes of things. And in the actual image, it's blurry. So if I look here, you've got the wall, but that's blurry. Here, not so much where it's up close, but far away, you can't see what this is or what's happening there. And here, if I zoom in, it's blurry back there. It's blurry behind. You can't see what's happening back here. You can't really see what's happening there. So in order to make this blurry, what we're going to do is take this refraction, take the glossiness of the refraction and lower this. So you lower this for things like frosted glass. So we're going to do that and that's going to blur out the details that we see back here. Now, in this case of this one I made earlier, I used this. This is from Viz People and I put this in the opacity slot. And what this does is it makes the blacks where you can see through, and whites you can't. And this works well, so you put this straight into opacity color. The problem with this, set at the full amount as it is, is it means where those dots have occurred, I can see straight through. 
So I, I don't want to be able to see straight, straight through. I don't want it clear where those dots are. So to handle that, I come in here and I lower the opacity amount and I'm going to lower this to 50%. And that's going to mean it doesn't see through completely where those dots are, where the black dots are. It's going to see through 50% and the rest of it is going to be handled with this refraction. And the final point is the bump. So I've got these maps. Again, these are from Viz people. I've got this one, and I've got this one, and these are mixed. These go into Corona normals, and then they're mixed. And if I open this open preview window, so you can see how much I've mixed them, I'm just using this mix amount set at 30%. You know, if you go all the way one way, if you go 100, you get the one map. If you go down to zero, you get the other one. So you just blend these together how you want them to be blended and then put that into bump. And the bump amount on this is set at 0.5. That could probably be set slightly higher. But you can run your own tests and see how much you want that bump amount to be set at. So that's how you create this. And then I'm just going to stop the interactive rendering. Uh, and I'm going to show you the mapping on these. If I just isolate one of these, Alt-Q, go Alt-W, select this top view, Alt-W. I'm just gonna close this actually so you can see what I'm doing. Just press Z for zoom, press F3. All right, so this is, this is the curtain. If I bring up the material editor, I double click on this guy and I make him visible, show on the material. There we go. So you can see the size of the map. And the same with this. If I make this viewable, you can see the size of that map. And this one, this is set to map channel too. All right, and this one, you can see it like that. I actually think I want this to be slightly larger. So if I just adjust this tiling down to 0.3, I can get that. And then if I come out of this, press F4. So you can see. So that's the scene. That's how it's set up. That's the final render. And that's a way of creating shears in Corona. Good luck.